This is Industry Wednesday. Every Wednesday, we analyze a different industry. Today, we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about the aviation industry. Welcome to ALUX.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello, Aluxers, and welcome back to our channel for another interesting video brought to you by our team here at Alux.com. Today, we're talking about the aviation industry, which is often thought of as modern aircraft, but in fact goes back many years. It has always been a dream of humankind to fly like birds. It seems as if it's ingrained in the human imagination to take flight. The first step in the aviation industry was the hot air balloon. It was invented back in the 18th century by the Montgolfier brothers. It was a lighter-than-air balloon, invented November 21, 1783. The Wright brothers flew their aircraft for the first time December 17, 1903 in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. The aviation industry has taken off since then. There are still hot air balloons on the market, but by the 1940s, there were commercial flights, Cessnas, and a booming military and commercial industry. As you know, today all one must do is sit down at a computer, book a flight, and within a few hours, you're seated on a modern marvel. The rapid growth and expansion of the aviation industry is almost overwhelming compared to the first spotty attempts at flight. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. So with that in mind, let's dig deeper and look at the 15 things you didn't know about the aviation industry. Number 1. The Wright brothers weren't the only integral parts in the development of the aviation industry. Despite the Wright brothers' famous flight, you may not know that there were several heavier-than-air aircraft developments preceding their flight. By 1799, Sir George Cayley had begun extensive work on lift, propulsion, and control in winged flight. By 1852, Henri Giffard had developed designs for machine-powered propulsion, and by 1896, David Schwartz had developed drawings regarding rigid frames. These were each precursors to the first successful flight and integral in what has advanced the aviation industry. Number 2. The Wright brothers weren't the first to successfully take flight. On record, there are competing claims for the first recorded manned flight. It seems ideas happen in clusters, and around the turn of the 20th century, several claims were made that implied successful flights. However, it's widely believed that Clement Ader in 1890 completed the first successful flight of 160 feet, a significant distance at the time. The craft was named the Ader Aeol and continued to be a pivotal figure in the advancement of flight, including a recorded military attempt. Number 3. World War II is to thank for the availability of commercial flights. Much of the boom in the aviation industry began following World War II. There were many pilots released back into civilian life, and small plane companies definitely profited from their new pastimes. Companies such as Cessna, Piper, and Beechcraft took off, so to say. In tandem, the commercial airline industry grew as well, and private commercial flights became widespread. Number 4. The innovation that is today's aircraft design began in the 1960s. While innovation continued in passenger airliners in the 1950s, such as Concorde, real innovation and advancement began in the 1960s to begin to resemble today's flights. In the 60s, cockpit developments such as solid-state electronics, global positioning systems, satellite communications, and LED displays took aviation into a very precise science that still to today allows both commercial and private planes to make exact decisions about their coordinates. Number 5. The aviation industry has its revenue of over $5 billion within the past 15 years. 
From 2003 until 2018, the annual revenue of the aviation industry has grown from around $322 billion to $834 billion. It, by statistics, is a fast-growing industry. Aviation is a behemoth. People have become increasingly dependent on flights, both domestic and international, and rely on military aviation to defend and survey their countries. Furthermore, small planes are still a desirable recreation for many. Number 6. Numerous commercial airline tragedies occurred in 1985. By some estimations, 1985 was the worst year in aviation history. During that year, there were several commercial crashes and many people died. Japan Airlines Flight 123 crashed, killing 520 people on board, as did Air India Flight 182, killing 329 people. There were many other crashes during that year, and in general, the year seems to be jinxed among flying years. All totaled up, even with smaller air fleets by year, 2,010 people died in 1985 due to commercial airline crashes. Number 7. Trained college graduates had less of a chance of being hired than the non-trained. In 2013, under Barack Obama's administration, the aviation industry had a conundrum. The scandal that ensued was over 3,000 college graduates being told they would have no advantage over untrained candidates wishing to apply for work in air traffic control stations. The scandal was mostly kept out of front page news, but did receive some publicity. Basically, those training for air traffic control are equipped with knowledge on radars, landing and takeoff schedules, flight paths, electronic communications, etc. The less qualified candidates had none of this training and were put in line before the trained candidates. Who knows what the effect is today? Number 8. 2009 – The Underwear Bomber Makes His Attempt on Christmas Day 2009, Umar Farooq Abdul Mutalab was seized on Northwest Airlines Flight 253 from Amsterdam to Detroit, Michigan. He was attempting to detonate a small explosive from his underwear. While this is not a controversy to the industry, which few are, it is the only recorded instance of a passenger, terrorist or otherwise, attempting to take down a plane from an explosive in their underwear pretty out there indeed. He's known as the Underwear Bomber and is serving four life sentences in ADX Florence in Colorado. Number 9. Many different aviation aircrafts can be regularly purchased. A Cessna Grand Caravan can be purchased on a regular aircraft website for $1.75 million. While there are similar planes, this is the type of aircraft which can carry several passengers and is also suitable for safaris. Used planes are often marketed on the internet for private buyers and can be housed at local and regional airports. This Cessna is listed under a passenger turboprop. There are 14,712 airports in the United States alone. Number 10. Private planes are much more accessible than you may think. The highest investment in a private airplane publicly recorded is an Airbus A380 valued at $500 million. According to one report, the plane includes a stable two-car garage, a room for the Prince's Hawks, and multiple bedrooms, bathrooms, and showers. While it's easy to simply look upon this luxury, it's also a marvel of engineering compared to the first flight at Kitty Hawk. The pioneers of aviation may have dreamed that one day a person could get their eight hours rest on a plane, but they were very busy doing the legwork just to get them to fly. And Alexers, if you're curious about private jets, we've covered this topic in detail. Click in the top right corner to watch our video, The Top 10 Most Expensive Jets in the World. Number 11. Bomber Plane Technology is the Latest in the Aviation Industry the latest in the aviation industry is, as usual, dependent on ground technology. 
Recently, NASA has developed a solar flying plane, and what could make more sense? The Helios is an atmospheric plane engineered by the U.S. government and powered by solar power. It is the cutting edge in new technology. There are other bomber planes based on advancement in older fuels with extraordinary engineering prowess, but a solar plane is both novel and useful. The Helios is considered an unmanned aerial vehicle. Number 12. The Aviation Industry Brings Aboard Its First Woman CEO in aviation news, Air France KLM Group is the first to appoint a woman as an aviation CEO. Her name is Anne Regale. She has, as many executives have, worked her way up the ranks of the aviation industry. Her career began as head of customer services at Paris's Orly Airport, and she has successfully occupied the intermediary posts on her way up to CEO. Her appointment was made December 12, 2018, and she assumed her role on December 17. Number 13. Over 3 billion airline tickets were sold in 2015 alone, and that number is expected to keep growing year over year. In 2015, it was recorded that 3.5 billion passengers flew on commercial airlines. This, however, does not mean that 3.5 billion individuals flew on airlines, as there are some individuals who fly multiple times per year, but rather there were 3.5 billion tickets sold. And with the population going up, that number is expected to go up every year as well. Number 14. Believe it or not, the first airline meal was introduced before the 1920s. In 1919, Handley Page Transport served its first airline meal on its London to Paris route. Since then, airline meals have become increasingly included on airlines, from snacks in coach to seven-course meals on long-haul first-class seats. The type of food, as a practice, is determined by the country of the airline and is often culturally reflective. Number 15. Traveling speeds have increased drastically thanks to advancements in the aviation industry. Just thinking about the airline industry, it may help to take a step back in time before the airplane, the automobile, or even the train. As recently as 150 years ago, people could spend an entire day, 24 entire hours, just traveling to a neighboring state in the USA. Today, an individual can board a plane in New York City and in less than 24 hours be across the Atlantic Ocean in Europe. Well, Aluxers, we've come a long way, and that wraps up our 15 things you didn't know about the aviation industry. Now, we're curious to know, what do you think about the convenience of airline travel? And of course, for watching with us all the way to the end, you know you get a bonus. Here it is. Number 16. Toys help to bring about the first propeller flight creation. A toy from the 4th century BC was the first reference known to propeller flight. It was designed with a small propeller for lift. What's more, these toys preceded Leonardo da Vinci's Renaissance drawings of a future helicopter. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.